Now, questions. A few people just left. They missed the questions part. Go ahead. Mute. Now, want me to turn off the camera so you guys can start questions? Yeah, go ahead. So the Ten Commandments has the first three. First three commandments tell us that a Kadosh Baruch Hu is very strict when it comes to how you serve him, meaning that you can't serve him your way, you have to serve him his way. So there's several places in the Torah that it talks about something called Yeshuvah Dat, where a person has to be focused, a person has to be in a state of mind that, of clarity, that they could fulfill the first three commandments of the ten. That, to acknowledge that Hashem took us out of Egypt, to acknowledge that there's no God other than God, there's no idols, and to also not use his name in vain, like for example, say Hashem's name, for no reason, like saying like Mikey and John and all types of names and treat Hashem as if he's not Hashem. And Hashem showed us this, what happens when somebody fails. Now, Aaron Cohen had four sons. All four of his sons were extremely righteous. Two of them, Nadav and Aviu, were the best of the best. So much so that the sages say they were in the level of Moshe and Aaron. Meaning the Nadav and Aviyu were on the same level as Moshe and Aaron. And they were the best. Tzadikim, righteous, everything is good. But then the Torah says that one day, they were celebrating with everybody else, and they decided, you know what, let's do a mitzvah. Let's go to the Kodesh Kodeshim and serve Hashem. Let's do a special offering for Hashem. Hashem killed them. Why would Hashem killed such righteous people that they're not going out with girls, they're not uh, wasting seed, they're not murdering anybody. They're not doing it. What are they doing? They're going to pray to Hashem in the highest level possible. And instead of Hashem saying, thank you, Chazaku Baruch, what he said, he kills them. So Chavim say, why? So there's five different reasons of why Hashem killed them. Reason number one, they had a little drink before they went. Why they have a little drink? Because they want to get drunk. They said, no, we want to be happy. We want to serve Hashem out of happiness. Why? Because Hashem says in Parashat Kitavo, Parashat Kitavo, we'll see it in about a month and a half, he says, part of the punishment is because when you served me, you didn't serve me with happiness. So part of the punishment is because you didn't serve me with happiness. So they know when we serve Hashem, we have to serve Him with happiness to be, you know, happy heart, glad. So you have a little drink, have a little nice little shot, little tequila, automatically you're happy, right? Hashem says, that's not the kind of happiness I'm looking for. And if you think that's the kind of happiness that I need, that I want you to be drunk, that you need something physical in order to be happy, Hashem says you've lost your right to live. You lost your right to live. Why? Because you failed all three of the first commandments. You failed even under acknowledging and understanding what your point in the world is. And you actually think that you need anything else but the Torah. Anything else but the Torah to be happy. And that's the failure of this generation. Now, Rav Moshe Feinstein, Allah Shalom, writes in Igot Moshe that somebody that smokes marijuana for, uh, you know, for himself, meaning not uh, because of medicinal reasons. If it's medicinal reasons, then they have a leniency, assuming they don't have any other option. Baruch Hashem, even people that use marijuana for medicinal reasons have a, uh, because of new innovations, they do have a, uh, a way to use the uh, actual uh, uh, plant without getting high, which is the CBD. They can use the CBD and, uh, and use that for their health reasons, meaning that they get the benefit of the drug or of the, of the plant without losing their state of mind. But anyone that still insists on smoking marijuana, then they're violating the Torah in many, many different ways. And Rav Moshe Feinstein says... That a person that does such a thing would have been judged, if it was the time of the Sanhedrin, 2,000 years ago, would have been judged to the death penalty. Like a Ben Soer or More. Why? Why Ben Soer or More? Because the Ben Soer or More chooses to be wayward, chooses to be against everything, even though he knows better. He simply chooses to change his own reality, chooses to overdrink, chooses to overeat, and so on and so forth. So it's not that somebody is, uh, you know, it's, it's against his will. No one is forcing you to smoke marijuana or take drugs. So when a person chooses to lose their yeshuva dat, their, their clarity of mind, then in essence they're obviously 
don't understand the purpose of the world, and they don't understand that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is literally here. Now, if you were trying to apply for a job, and a job is the best job in the world, let's say, it's going to pay you a million dollars a day. You're going to work for some hedge fund. You're going to get a million dollars a day. Now, of course, you're not going to show up to the job with, uh, you know, underwear and a t-shirt. You're going to show up with your best suit. You're going to show up with your best tie. You may even borrow some money to get a nice suit, a nice tie, just to make sure that you look presentable to, in order to get a job that gives a million dollars a day. And when you see the guy, you're going to shake his hand really firm. How are you, sir? How are you, ma'am? How's everybody? And all of a sudden, you speak British. You're like, uh, you know, speak really well. And everything is good. You use all your dots and your E's and everything else. And you have a business card, even though you don't have a job. And everything is changed. Why? Because you want the job. You want the job. So you have a business card, but you don't have a job. You have a business card with your name on it. And your cell phone number on it. And your mommy's address, because you still live with Ima. And you have that. You get, yes, sir. In case you need me, it's me. It's me. So, uh, what, it's a company? Yeah, it's something like that. I'm an independent contractor. And you're all psyched up. You give the guy the business card. And you speak British all of a sudden. And everything is good. Everything is fine. Because you want the job. Why? Because you're giving this guy that's interviewing, or this woman that's interviewing, a lot of honor, a lot of respect in order to benefit from them. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, how come you don't treat me like this? I'm in front of you all the time. I'm in front of you all the time. How come you don't treat me like this? How come you don't speak politely? You don't have cover now when you pray. You don't have the real intention to learn. You don't wait for the answer to be given to you completely. You walk out in the middle of the answer of the question that you asked. How come? Did you really want to know the answer or did you want to find, maybe I could uh, use one of his words to just not listen? How come? Because Abu Ta'i, we all have a Yetzirah and the Yetzirah has many, many tools. And one of the most dangerous tools that a Yetzirah has is confusion leading you to become confused. But confused is confused by choice. Why confused by choice? Because you are spiritually lazy. Like Shlomo Medach says, laziness, that leads to tiredness. What kind of tiredness? Spiritual tiredness. You're tired of doing mitzvot because you're lazy. You don't want to find out why should I do mitzvot? Why should I do mitzvot? Ah, it's too much for me. So when a person is spiritually lazy and they don't want to listen to the whole answer, they don't want to listen to the whole shiu. They don't want to do the full mitzvah. They don't want to do all that stuff. They're always going to have the excuse to justify their current behavior. Even though their current behavior is giving them a little bit of a bad feeling inside. They know there's something wrong with it. But they still continue. Why? Because ah, it's too hard to do tshuva for this one. Let me try to pick an easier mitzvah. Let me try to pick an easier mitzvah. By the way, for all of those people that are in a cash advance business, the law of not being allowed to be in a cash advance business was in last week's parasha for anyone who didn't see it. It says, Et kaspecha lo titen lo beneshech velo marbit lo titen achlecha. In uh, chapter 20, 25, verse 36, Do not take interest and increase, and you shall fear your God and let your brother live with you. Do not give him your money with interest, and do not give your food for increase. I am Hashem your God. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is saying you're not allowed to lend Jews money with interest. But he connects Yirat Shemaim with it. He says you have to fear Hashem. What does fearing Hashem and lending money with interest have to do with each other? He says if you want to get out of the cash advance business, the only thing you need is fear of Hashem. That's it. That's all you need. If you're afraid of Hashem, you'll leave the business tomorrow. No questions. No, what if I have a solution? No, what if maybe I could find a different leniency. Maybe I could only deal with this type of client and I could be a discount broker. Nothing. You simply get up, leave. Why? Because you're afraid that God is going to put you in a place that no one can help you. Including him himself. Why? It's his own laws. So all you need to get out of that rotten, vulturous business and any vulturous business is Yerat Shemayim. You have, your mind. you have to be afraid of Hashem. Afraid that Hashem will punish you. Not in this world. In the next world. In the next world. And that's the thing that people need to have. If you have Yirat Shemaim, you will have full tshuva. You don't have Yirat Shemaim, you won't have full tshuva. You won't even have half tshuva. You'll have nothing. Why? Because tshuva is, requires Yirat Shemaim. Requires fear of Hashem. Requires fear of Hashem when you're conducting business. Requires fear of Hashem when you're learning Torah. 
requires fear of Hashem when you're asking questions, it requires you know, fear of Hashem when you're getting answers. Fear of Hashem is the beginning of all wisdom. That's what David HaMelech says, that's what Shlomo HaMelech says, that's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself said. There's many places in the Torah that Hashem talks about fear of Hashem. Why? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu needs you to know He's not your buddy. He's not your buddy. He's your father, but He's also your king. If you treat Him that way, you'll have a good relationship with Him. A very beneficial one. If you don't, and you treat Him as if you're doing Him favors with each, uh, you know, each Dvar Torah that you're learning, with each Shui that you're attending, if each mitzvah it's as if you're doing Him a favor, then guess what? You're not going to get very far with your Abu Hashem. And that's why it's required. It's a required learning for each and every one of us to learn why should we fear Hashem? How can we serve Hashem through fear and ultimately get to love Hashem? But that doesn't make fear go away. That just means that the love is on top of the fear. It's not that it's either love or fear. It's both or nothing. 